Hallo. So. Everybody's talking about it. Fender's new Tom DeLong signature Starcaster, that is. And it seems that this one has had mixed reviews so far. So let's take a wee look and see what's going on here. Compare it to some other Starcasters. There are alternatives. Disclaimer. I'm a massive Starcaster fan. It's like my number one favourite guitar of all time ever. Disclaimer 2. I don't have one of these new Tom DeLong ones. Really? Like... I don't know what it feels or plays like, I have no idea. But I don't think that really matters too much for what we're looking at here today. I think it's fair to say that I know my way around a Starcaster or two. And before we all start complaining too much about all the specs and choices, just remember that this will be the choices and preferences of mainly one person, Mr. Tom DeLong. But it's, it's been a lifelong journey. And you may or may not have the same preferences. I certainly don't, so please allow me to be a complete hypocrite and complain about it. So, what are we getting for this many monies? And how does it compare to some other Starcasters that are already available from Fender and Squire? Well, the Fender ones are discontinued now, but bear with me. So, it does have some pretty cool and unique, interesting features, but it has some other features that are a bit... meh. Sorry, Tom. That's cool, and I get that. I totally, I mean, I... Right, here we go. We've got a modern C-shaped roasted maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. Now, for some people, this is going to be great. Some people like the Starcaster, but they don't like the maple or roasted maple fretboards. And they also don't like the original Starcaster headstock shape either. I love it. On this Tom DeLong one, it looks more like they've went with a headstock shape from the Fender Coronado. Another very cool guitar. For me, the main appeal of the Starcaster design is it's one of the few semi-hollow guitars ever made with a maple fretboard. And if you add to that combo that it's also an offset, that's like the holy trinity of the Starcaster vibe, in my opinion. If you do want a Starcaster with a roasted maple fretboard, then look no further than the Squire Active Contemporary Starcaster, which also features this awesome neck heel carve. And you can get it in gold too. And if you don't like the high gain active pickup type stuff, that's okay. It's a great mod platform too. I've slowly been turning mines into like a Gretsch type thing. There's a couple of videos on that up there. Anyway, back to the Tom DeLonge. The body is laminated maple with center block. Now that's not like super impressive, but it's pretty much the same as what you got with the Chinese made Fender Modern Player Series Starcaster. This one that I've showed you like eight times now. Unfortunately, these are now discontinued again Starcasters have a bit of a history of getting discontinued. But anyway, you could pick up one of these used for about the same price as one of these Fender Tom DeLonge models. Something to think about. The standout features of the Tom DeLonge is, in my opinion, the satin urethane finish. I think it looks kind of cool. Although I'm personally not a fan of any of these new finishes, just because I don't like the look of them against the rosewood fretboard. But hey, at least you're getting real rosewood again. Good on you, Fender. We're also getting Fender Deluxe Staggered Locking Tuners, which is great. I'm all for locking tuners. In fact, I've put them on both my Starcasters. It's like a 40 to 80 pound upgrade, depending on which ones you go for. Another unique feature of the Tom DeLong is obviously the engraved neck plate, but with the addition of the strap button. You might like that. Personally, I think they should also have added the conventional position for the strap button on the top horn too, but what do I know? The bridge pickup is a Seymour Duncan Duncan Custom SH5. That's a fairly premium pickup, which is great if you like that sort of thing. Right, okay, so who is this for? Because I think it's going to tick quite a few boxes for a lot of people, like Tom DeLong fans? I don't really ever talk to the fans myself. I find that uh, to be repulsive and uh, I don't have time for it. If you think about it, most of the people who would have been into Blink-182 around about the time that they broke out will be around about the age now where they're in a position in life to potentially afford something like this. Could be a doable purchase. Uh, people who hate neck pickups? People who like the idea of a Starcaster, but 
they don't like maple fretboards. And maybe they're brave enough to mod it into like a two pickup guitar. Or people who like Starcasters but will never accept the Squire name on their headstock. If you're not one of the above and you're still considering purchasing one of these, let me know in the comments what it is about this guitar that's doing it for you. I want to know because if it was me and I didn't already have these two, I would seriously consider looking out for a used Fender Modern Player Starcaster. All of the original finishes look absolutely awesome, in my opinion. The aged cherry burst, the natural and even the black looks absolutely killer. Super classy looking guitar. Next up is the Squire Classic Vibe Starcasters. I think these are discontinued now too, but you can still get them around here and there. Keep an eye out for them. And these are almost identical to the Fender Modern Player Starcasters. I'm pretty sure there was a time back in the day when they were both coming out of the same factory in China, but I could be wrong about that. But I think they're pretty much the same guitar. I always fancied the walnut stained one. Check it out. Next up, you've got the Squire Contemporary Active Starcasters. One of the main differences with these is that they don't have any F-holes, but they're still semi-hollow. Well, unless you put, like, a decal on it, because I think it looks weird without an F-hole. Probably doesn't look any better with a decal, but there you go. These are pretty close in spec to the Tom DeLonge, in my opinion. You've still got your roasted maple neck, 12-inch fretboard radius, but then you're also getting the roasted maple fretboard. And another pickup. They even do it in gold, which is a little bit like one of the DeLong Starcasters. And the previous generation of Squire Contemporary Active Starcasters had a couple of similar finishes too. It was an ice blue metallic and surf pearl or something. I think there's also a black one, but yeah. So there are other options similar. But then these have got the maple fretboard again, and it's more of a pale maple, not roasted. So you might like that, you might not. Personally, I still prefer it over the rosewood. Then you've got the Squire Affinity Series Starcasters. These are the least expensive of the bunch. And in my opinion, I think these would make great modding platforms. One of the things that stands out to me with these affinities that makes it look a little bit more affordable is the lack of binding, especially no binding around the F-holes. You do get binding on the Squire Classic Vibes and the Fender Modern Player around the body and on the inside the F-holes. Of course, not on the contemporary because there's no F-holes. But yeah, the lack of binding on the affinity was one of the sort of trademarks of the more affordable look, in my opinion. So to me, I found it interesting there was no binding on the F-holes of the Tom DeLong model either. But, I suppose it's not very punk rock, is it, to have ornate binding and that kind of thing. It's obviously Tom DeLong's preference, so fair enough. Thank you so much. So for my money, all of the above are of more interest to me than this new Fender offering. And I think it's priced okay-ish. I mean, I certainly wouldn't buy one. But, if they're going to be charging this kind of money, and for what you're getting, you better hope that the QC is on point because the Fender Tom DeLong Stratocaster that came out not too long ago had some shocking reviews for the QC. Check the internet. So one of the great things to come out of this is that it's put Starcasters back in the limelight again. And what I would love to see come out of this is some other companies starting to take note and making similar design guitars. Did you see the Harley Benton? interpretation of the Tom DeLong Strat. Roasted maple neck, stainless steel frets, lock and tuners, compound radius I think, Babix trim maybe, I can't remember but looked pretty impressive. So imagine if Harley Benton did some kind of souped up version of a Starcaster. How cool would that be? That would be awesome and I would definitely want to check one out. I would probably get one and mod it. Loads. Probably. So how about it? Starcasters, yay or nay? Have you ever tried one? Have you tried any Starcaster? Let me know about it in the comments. And by the way, I've got an insane story about this Starcaster that I'm yet to tell. I'll do it one day. If you'd like to hear about that one day, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. You never know, you might like it. And also, subscribing helps the channel or something. Cheers! Right, well that's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time. See you later!